What is the best question you've ever heard a child ask? My son. Hey, Dad. When are you going to die? Me. I don't know. Hopefully not for a long time. My son. Oh. Well, when you and Mom die, I want new parents. Me. You what? My son. I love you guys, but I need parents. I'm not old enough to use the stove. Very pragmatic for a four-year-old. That kid is cutthroat. He is going places. I don't personally remember it, but my dad always reminds me of the time we were both driving in the car when I was about seven or eight. We come to a stop at a red light, and out of the blue, I ask, Hey dad, would a shaved baby gorilla look like a really ugly baby, or would it look like a gorilla? He peed laughing. For some reason, cars seem to foster deep thinking in kids. My fiancé's nephew, when he was about five, asked his granddad while in the car, Why is oil? I teach swimming lessons. My favorite question has been, When do we learn how to breathe underwater? This year at Christmas, my aunt wrapped my three-year-old cousin's present three separate times to bug her. After unwrapping the first two layers, she looked up and sighed, is this really necessary? I love when kids make adult comments like that. My cousin was in his booster seat in the back of the car. My Nana got into the seat in front of him. He sighed and went, Nana, your hair is in the right state. You need to get another perm. We were also in the car once driving past a car sales place that had closed down. And he says, Liliana, did you know that that garage went bankrupt? It's under new ownership. I know he was probably just repeating what his dad had told him, but still pretty funny hearing that coming from a kid in a booster seat. LOL, yes. Gotta love the little kids parroting grown-ups. My older sister's first complete, grammatically correct sentence was like that. My grandparents were over visiting my parents. Some aunts and uncles were there as well. My sister was the first grandchild in the family, so there was much to do about her. So anyway, they're all sitting in the living room and my older sister, who's probably just shy of two at the time, is sitting in the middle of the floor playing with her toy. As so often happens in situations like that, the adults aren't talking much and the baby is the focus of a lot of attention. She starts to get frustrated with the toy she's playing with and screws up her little reddening face, picks the toy up and shouts in the exact cadence my father uses at the top of her lungs, God damn this piece of thing! and throws the toy against the couch. My very Catholic grandma was not amused, but apparently my grandfather fell out of his chair laughing. I'm a single dad. My wife died when my son was 13 months old. When he wasn't even two yet, probably around 20 months or so, he looked at me one day and said, Daddy, where's my mommy? It completely caught me off guard. I hadn't expected him to really notice the difference between himself and the other kids at daycare for a lot longer, but it was clear he had noticed that all the other kids had moms and dads, and he wanted to know where his mom was. My dad died when I was barely 11 months old, and I was raised solely by my mother. My mom has a similar story of me asking where daddy was at a young age, and like you, she was always completely honest with me that he had died, but that he loved me very much. She always made it a point to share as many memories and stories of him as possible. And looking back, that was incredibly helpful. To this day, I still carry his gold necklace with me. I actually usually wear it as a bracelet. Elementary school was particularly hard for me as a little girl with just a mom. Kids can be incredibly cruel. Some of my then peers, when they learned that my dad wasn't there, said and or asked the following. Oh, your dad isn't here? That must mean that he didn't love you enough to stay. I don't believe you that your dad is dead. I think that he's away on a business trip, and you're just looking for attention. And my personal favorite, gotta love what little kids pick up at home. I don't believe that your dad is dead. I think that your mom and him got divorced, or he hit your mom, or he was a bad dad. All said by different kids. So your mom lies because she's embarrassed. I guess what I'm saying is just try to be attentive to that type of thing with your son's peers. I didn't tell my mom about any of this until I started university, and she was incredibly shocked and hurt, and had had no idea that this had been said. I'm sorry if I'm coming off as presumptuous on giving advice, 
It's just something that was a really big issue for me when I was younger and caused a lot of confusion and hurt, as well as something that doesn't always automatically come to mind when thinking about the difficulties of raising a child with a dead parent. When I was in kindergarten, a magician came to our class. He had a handkerchief, and he said he was going to make it disappear into the fourth dimension. One of the kids in my class raised his hand and asked, is it the fourth dimension time? This is why we shouldn't fool kids with 3D movies. There are always three dimensions in a movie. One, two, and four. When my grandma told our family that she was getting married again, 10 years after her husband had died, my cousin, who was about five, asked her why. She said that she really liked our grandpa to be, and he talked to her and made her not feel lonely. My cousin then asked, why don't you just get a parrot? The day I got married, my nephew asked the same. Why did you marry? I said I loved my husband. He replied, but you will love him anyway. Why do you have to get married then? I couldn't really find a good reason for him to understand it. My nephew, two years old. We heard a sound come from his room while he was supposed to be in bed and went to check on him. He'd managed to somehow make the Tolkien powder bottle explode all over him and the room. He tried to pretend nothing had happened, so we put him in front of the mirror. First words, uh-oh. Then we ask, why did you do that? His response, because I'm sorry. Best answer ever. More of a statement than a question, but epic nonetheless, and an answer we could all use. Okay, this one is cracking me up. Not so much the response, but him trying to pretend nothing happened and then imagining his face when he saw his reflection. The simple uh-oh is freaking hilarious. My five-year-old son asks me this kind of stuff all of the time. It's amazing to watch their brains grow and their reasoning skills develop. Last week he asked me why flies think gross stuff smells good and good stuff smells gross. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, how do I explain this at a kiddie level? When he comes up with his own hypothesis, he figured their lungs are upside down. I had to call my wife to tell her. That is the cutest thing ever. It's really a pretty clever conclusion. Once, as I was leaving work, I passed a young boy and his mother in line for the cash register. The little boy looked up at his mom and said, Mommy, what is this? She replied, It's a line, sweetie. The kid then looked around, wide-eyed, and shouted, Oh my gosh, I'm in a line! That reminds me of the time my mom took my sister and me to Disney World. I was about 12 and my sister was only 3. We were waiting in line for my sister to meet the princesses. It was one of those zigzag lines through the ropes. She didn't seem to grasp the concept of waiting in line and kept saying, But they are right there! Why don't we just walk over there? My mom tried to explain that we have to wait for the other people to get up there first, and she said, then why don't they just walk over there? Not my story, but it still stuck with me. My girlfriend's dad was driving home his son, David, who was then around seven. David was lying on that shelf that most sedans have behind the back seat so that he could watch the stars through the rear mirror. It was completely silent when David says, I wish people could think of a different word for love so that it was easier to understand. The dad was speechless and kept on driving. My niece. Uncle, how hard do I have to jump so that I don't come back down? Me. Jesus Christ, this kid is asking what her escape velocity is. Chick is just barely getting used to being on Earth, and she already wants to leave it. I remember when I was in third or fourth grade science class, I asked my teacher, if there isn't any air in space, then how does the sun burn? Being the awesome science teacher that she was, she didn't hold back anything and told me that it was a nuclear reaction and that it didn't need air to happen. I loved that teacher. Fortunately, my science teachers through the years have only gotten better and better. If there is no air in space, why is there air in a space museum? When I was a kid, I thought it was the Aaron Space Museum, and I always wondered who this awesome astronaut named Aaron was and what he actually did to merit a museum named after him. About two days ago, I went to the park to go get some sun and exercise. There was a big pyramid of ropes, it's actually quite cool, and all of the children were playing on it. When all of a sudden I hear a kid ask, why are we climbing this? I just laughed to myself, 
admitting that it is pretty silly to think that we just put some ropes up for no reason but to climb up and then climb down. Kids are probably the smartest of us all. They haven't been tainted by society just yet. I'm just imagining a little kid running around aimlessly on the playground and stopping dead in his tracks to ask this question. Wait, what the hell am I doing?